Hi everyone, Baxter here. This tutorial will go over the basics of getting started with Chromapper. Chromapper is a beatmap editor that has been under development for a couple of years now. Caden and his team have done a great job at building a very useful tool that creates custom beatmaps for Beat Saber. But not only that, because Chromapper is open source, you may see it get used and adapted in the future uh, for other games. Uh, it's full of a lot of useful features and produces a really solid workflow that makes the mapping process almost feel more like a game. Now this tutorial will mostly be about how to use the basics of Chromapper, so we won't be going through all of its many bells and whistles. Uh, I will go over some standard mapping conventions and other tips along the way. And we will include useful links to resources that give guidance on other parts of the mapping process, like setting up your music file. Now Chromapper does support plugins, and so you can find plugins at the Chromapper Discord page, or if there is another repository for them, we will link it below under this video. So once you've downloaded the plugins, just select them and then drop them into the plugin folder. I will be going over just two plugins during this tutorial, the Auto Bookmarker plugin and the Error Check plugin. Now a brief mention as to the Auto Updater. Now this is the screen I've had up in the back here. It's recommended that you download this and run it periodically to make sure your version of Chromapper is up to date. It does get updated fairly frequently and just follow the link that we've provided below, select your operating system, and then download the file. And the file will also load Chromapper, so you can optionally use it as your launcher, which we will do now. All right, so here is the main screen of Chromapper, and what it will list over here on the left is whatever maps or files you already have in your custom WIP levels folder, that's what it defaults to. But let's go through the process of creating a new map. So first, let's just create a new map. We will enter the song name here. And that takes us to this first screen, the song info screen. Now it will already have the song name that we input, but we will need to add everything else. So the song author, whoever that might be, the mapper goes in the creator field and once you hit save here it will create an info file and a subfolder in your custom WIP level folder. So as we can see we now have a, a, new, a new map here. All it has is an info file uh, so we'll need to start adding, adding some files to it. So what we have here we've got uh, a cover image and an audio file. Both of those will need to go in here and so once you have exported your audio file from Audacity and found a cover image, uh, whatever com cover image you want to use with the map, you will simply drop them into the new folder. So I have them here. I typically just name the, the song files song and the covers file, cover files cover. So we drop them in there. And then once I hit save again, the check marks show up indicating that the file names in the folder match what I have here. And now that we have audio, it will populate the waveform and we can choose a, a, a preview. If there's a song loader that people are using in the game, then they can hear a preview of what the song and map is going to sound like. So this song happens to be called Hazard by Scary Noise. And I went in and, and listened to it and I, I listened to the first drop. I think it was the drop tends to kind of define the song. So I went in and listened to this song and found that the drop starts at around 61 seconds in. So that's where I'm going to start my preview. And that first drop goes for about 16 seconds. So that's what I'm going to save it as. And then we can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so, so you kind of give the player, idea, uh, player an idea of what they're getting into. And we also need to add the BPM for the song. In this case, it's 128. All right, and now that we've added the BPM, we are ready to start a new level. So all you need to do is click on one of these boxes, whichever difficulty level you want to create. So I'm gonna start with Expert Plus. Then we hit the Save icon. And what that does is it saves a copy of now an Expert Plus level into our folder. There it is, Expert Plus Standard. And now it will automatically populate the note jump speed and the jump distance. 
So the, the node jump speed and the jump distance relate to where the targets appear in the game, how closely, the, uh, how rapidly they are approaching the player. And it's a, often a function of the BPM. So if you change this BPM, it will change the jump distance. So we're at 128. It gives me, and it defaults to a node jump speed of 16. A jump distance of 30 is fine for me, so I'll just leave it like that. And before we get started, we'll also need to choose an environment. So it defaults to one, but you can choose really which, any one you want. You have several to choose from. All right, now that we've done that, we are ready to get started. And to get started, all we will do is click the Open Editor button, which is currently hidden behind, hidden behind my screen there. Uh, but once we've selected the difficulty level, we hit Open Editor, and it will open a new map for us. Okay, so this is the initial screen. Uh, your map editing screen. Uh, you'll have, we have the lighting over here on the right, which I, which I won't get into during this tutorial. And then of course the object placement over here on the left. All right, so now that we've no loaded up a new map, the first thing that I want to do is bookmark my map. So bookmarks are important because they help you understand the structure of the song. Uh, they help you more easily navigate through your map and they help you plan out sections that you're ultimately going to mirror. You can manually create bookmarks by just hitting the B key, and that brings up the bookmark interface. You can type in the name of your bookmark, hit submit, and it will create a bookmark on that beat marker. But one of the plugins I would recommend uh, you download is called the Auto Bookmarker plugin. Now this will allow you to easily and quickly populate bookmarks throughout the map, which then you can go in afterward and label. Now, if you're dealing with a song that is not structured very traditionally, such as one of Camellia's songs, for example, then you may just have to do bookmarks manually, which will take some extra time, but it's still definitely worth it. You want to do that. Also a tip, when you're setting up your audio, I would recommend that you make sure that the first section of your map start at beat four. Uh, one reason is because most songs can be subdivided into sections of 16 or 32 beats. Uh, and if you start on beat four, beat four at each time, uh, this will keep your bookmarks uh, on even numbers and generally consistent. All right, so to access this plugin, you'll hit the tab key in Chrome Mapper, and that brings up this uh, little menu on the right. Um, and this bottom most icon, Generate Bookmarks, is our Auto Bookmarker plugin. So I'm going to click that. The first field will ask you where you want to start your automatic bookmarks. Now, as I was just saying, I like to start my first section at beat four. And so this uh, plugin does that automatically and starts me at beat four. So I will just hit that submit. Now it, this screen wants to know how big each bookmark se section should be. Now, like I was saying, most sections are going to be 16 or 32 count counts long. And in this song, it's going to be 32. So I'll change that. And then the next screen will ask how many bookmarks you want to generate. Now, typically you'll just keep the negative one here to fill the whole song. It will start at beat four, and then every, two, every 32 counts, it will uh, drop another bookmark. And that is what I want. So I'm just gonna hit submit. And then finally, what do we want to call these bookmarks? This will just be a placeholder label because I'm, gonna, I'm going to go through afterward and, and label them more specifically. So I'm just gonna put BM and then it will place a number one uh, as it numbers each bookmark sequentially. All right, so there we have it. I now have bookmarks throughout my, uh, throughout my map and they do coincide where each section of the song begins. So here. So this, this, what is called BM4 is going to end up being, I think the build one is what I call it. Um, BM5 is going to be the drop 1A. So I, I split the drops up into two 32 count sections. Um, and that's what I'll end up uh, labeling those. And you can do that, of course, just hit the B key. And if this becomes build one, then just do that and it will re replace the original placeholder bookmark. And typically for EDM music like this song, uh, once you've 
labeled uh, several of the initial bookmarks, you'll see that those sections tend to repeat later on. So you can label those later sections like drop 2A, drop 3A. If there are verses or if there are builds, you can label those sequentially as well. Sometimes uh, music doesn't have verses or traditional verses and you can just use letters like A, B, C. As long as you keep it consistent, as long as they make sense to you, that's what matters most uh, so that you know where you're going to be repeating sections later. Now, one uh, resource that we will link below and that you'll definitely want to take a look at is the BSMG Wiki. Uh, it's got all sorts of useful resources, including audio setup, uh, other community editors, best mapping practices, guides for how to do lighting, uh, and a lot of other really great information. Uh, remember, mapping, just like any creative endeavor, it does take a lot of work, so don't assume this will be easy, uh, but we are trying to take the uh, tedious mechanical aspects and making them a lot simpler with Chromapper. That concludes part one of this tutorial. Uh, in part two, we'll be going over how to navigate through the map, uh, how to place objects, how to use the copy and paste functions, um, tips on building symmetry into your mapping, and uh, how to check for errors using the error check plugin.